today's live stream is an interactive workshop for activists who want to um, uh, work a little bit on their outreach and at the end of the live stream if you guys have any questions for me I'll be taking questions as well it's called interactive because it's not just me talking I'll be asking questions and then you guys can help me with the responses I'll bring up the most common excuses that we get from non-vegans and then we can discuss the um, responses. All right, let's get started. And then if you have any questions, please keep your questions for the end of the live stream. Um, and then the last portion would be me just taking um, general questions or questions regarding AV, activism, anything that is relevant to our work. So let's get started with the workshop. What do you say to someone? No, nah, Nelly. You can, no. <laughs> what do you say to someone who says, um, what about plants though? Plants have feelings as well and vegans eat a lot of plants. So you're basically killing plants. How do you respond to the plants though argument? <laughs> Paula said, Nelly knows how ridiculous the plants have feelings objection is. <laughs> That's why he's complaining like that. I guess that's it for this question. So if someone says, but what about plants? Vegans kill a lot of plants and therefore you're responsible for killing plants. Um, they have feelings as well and they're alive. How do you respond to that? And just like many of you said, obviously plants do not have a central nervous system. They don't have a brain. I've seen this, um, line being used sometimes by um, by activists and I think it's quite funny so if you're outreaching someone especially if they're standing like where there's grass um, and they're standing on the grass and then you can you can ask them also oh, you're you're actually standing on grass are you going to move because you're actually standing on a on a live being someone who f has feelings and they can feel pain so um, or you can ask them so are you saying that when you're walking on the street you avoid going on the grass because you avoid harming grass because they have feelings um another really good argument which i like well not an argument the response that i like is the one about firefighters going back to save plants that literally never happens so if your house is on fire and the firefighter goes in they get your children they get your animals if they come back and you say, oh, did you save my plants? They will just laugh at you. Nobody is going to risk their life to go back in and save a plant. And um, that's because they're, it's just not the same. Yes, they are alive in the way that they are breathing oxygen, etc., and they grow, but um, they're not a sentient being. It's happened to me when, when people bring up this plants um, argument and I remember once I was outreaching a guy who was there with his family, so his wife and children, and he brought it up. And I just looked at him because it looked like he was kind of smiling. And I said, even you are laughing at how dumb this is. And then they all started laughing and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can even approach it like that, you know. Um, I didn't really need to debunk it. He, he, he just, he admitted himself that he was just taking the piss, so. Then we moved on to the next thing. But don't avoid responding to these arguments no matter how dumb they are, no matter how stupid and ridiculous they are. Because that's literally our job as an outreacher. Um, we're there to debunk all these arguments and they're always the same. It's like 10 or 20 that are very common and every non-vegan uses those. How do you respond to the argument when someone says, Actually, humans are omnivores, meaning they can eat anything. They can eat plants and animal products or animal flesh. How do you respond to that one? So if someone says humans are omnivores, um, like some of you said, um, that's, what, that's what I would say as well. Just because you can do something, just because you are able to do something, does that make it morally okay to do it? And I would... Um, I would say it as a question rather than a statement. So instead of saying just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. I would ask them, just because you have the ability to do something, do you think it's morally okay to do it? For example, if you have a penis, 
then does that make it okay for you to rape? If you have hands, does that make it morally okay to choke someone and kill them? Just because you have a leg and a foot, does that make it morally okay to kick little children in the face? So the fact that you're physically able to do something doesn't morally justify doing that thing if it's an evil act, if it's wrong, if it's morally and ethically wrong. That would be basically um, the response. I know that um, I know that we can get, get into how our bodies are actually designed differently in terms of our digestive system, our jaws, our teeth, um, how we don't have claws and things like that. We can get into that as well, but I personally like to just start by, by saying just because you have the ability to do it doesn't mean you should do it. And, um, you know, we're still arguing about whether humans are actually herbivores or omnivores, but again, it doesn't matter as much because even if we are designed in a way that we can eat both plants and animal products, that means if you can survive and thrive on just plants, then why are you killing innocent beings needlessly? So if you don't need to, because I feel like the answer is in their question or in their statement. If we can eat both sources of food, then why are you choosing the cruel, evil one? Just go with the more ethical option if you can just survive on both. Let's say you're talking to someone who's still living with their family and they say, if I go vegan, my family will um, basically disown me. They won't talk to me, they won't give me money. Um, or if someone says, if I go vegan, my family will stop talking to me, my friends will stop talking to me, my partner will leave me. How do you respond to those kind of questions? So the way I would respond, even if this person has been married to their partner for 20 years or whatever, right? Because even when you live with your family, you grow up in the same family or um, you have been in a relationship with someone for a significant amount of time, what happens sometimes is as you evolve as a human being, your values might change, right? So you might end up believing in things, you might end up opening your eyes to things, you might end up accepting the truth and your partner may not choose to go down the same path. So what happens is you grew apart, right? What I would say to this person is if your wife is going to divorce you based on the fact that you have decided to stop participating and paying for animal cruelty, you gotta ask yourself, is this person aligned with your values? If veganism is a value to you, if animal rights is a value to you, just like non-racism or non-sexism is. So someone, someone did bring up the fact that they wouldn't have the same approach if it came down to another injustice. And I think that's exactly the point. So ask them, if you were a racist and your wife was a racist when you got married, at some point you realize that you've been an ignorant piece of shit, you open your eyes, and you decide to be a better person, so you stop being a racist. Are you then going to be okay with your wife saying, I'm going to divorce you now that you're not a racist anymore? This is exactly the same thing. We're talking about speciesism, which is a form of discrimination. It's oppression towards non-human animals. So if you decide to stop being a speciesist, if you decide that you don't wanna pay for animal cruelty anymore, and your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your parents, your sister, if someone says, if you go vegan, I'm gonna cut you out of my life, good, because that person is actually holding values that go completely against your values. And I know that it's uncomfortable. I know that it's going to be painful to end a relationship or to cut your family off completely, but you got to put your values first. So again, if, if you're married to a rapist or someone that supports rapists, at some point, if you realize that's evil and you don't want anything to do with it, 
it shouldn't be that they threaten you that if you did stop then they will divorce you shouldn't it be the other way around like shouldn't it be like okay now that i've opened my eyes to the truth and the reality that rape is wrong if you continue raping or supporting rapists i am the one going to leave you because because your values and mine don't align it's funny this question is really funny to me because it's actually the other way around so the wife who's a non-vegan is threatening the husband that if you go vegan, I'm going to divorce you. If I was in that position, if I was in a relationship with a non-vegan, even if I was married for 25 years, and at some point I said, oh, like I've been ignorant my whole life, I wanna go vegan. Not only I would go vegan, regardless of what he thinks, but I would say, look, if you're not going to go vegan, if you're going to uh, continue supporting animal cruelty, if you're going to pay for animals to be tortured and murdered, I'm going to leave you. So, yeah, I, I don't understand why this person just doesn't have the courage to stand for, stand up for what they think is right. And we all know that that's right. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, to change the question a little bit so that it applies to maybe more people. So if somebody that you're talking to is worried that they're going to lose their relationship, their family, friends, whatever, because if they go vegan, people are going to just cut them out of their life or they're going to divorce them or leave them or break up with them, then you just need to explain to them how when you hold on to a value, then you're going to have to defend your values. You're not going to disrespect your own values because you don't want to lose another human being in your life. That just means that you're giving into the pressure and you're actually discounting on your own values as a human. So that's how I would respond. Someone said, how do you respond to people that say uh, veganism is a privileged thing and um, you know, like, it's only for rich people or it's only for white people. Um, how do you deal with that? I thought it was interesting because it's not very common, but I've, I've heard this before. Plants are um, the cheapest food on the planet, like rice, beans, potatoes, corn, bananas, other fruit. That, and that is true everywhere in the world, right? But I would prefer to make the other points before I make that point because, again, by saying that we're focusing on the diet aspect of veganism, which we shouldn't focus on too much as the main point. So you can bring that up later. But uh, when someone says veganism is a privilege, the best response is... Um, something like what Laura was saying about abusing and murder being um, a privilege. So you can again make the comparison between speciesism and racism, sexism, child abuse, any any other form of injustice. So you can say, are you do you hold the same values when it comes to or beliefs when it comes to other forms of injustices? Do you think that racism or anti-racism is also a privilege? Do you think that um, holding values that are against child abuse or um, being against uh, homophobia or being against sexism. Do you think that's a privilege? Do you think that only applies to a certain race? Do you think that's only um, happening in the West? Do you think that's only specific to um, like rich people? It just just ask them the question instead of making a statement just let them think um, because again it's ridiculous speciesism is a form of discrimination compare it to any other form um, like the most common one the common ones are sexism and racism um, when you're talking someone when you're talking to someone about racism when you're asking someone to stop being a racist when you're asking someone to stop being a rapist you don't say they don't say it's a privilege i can't do it because i'm black or i'm brown or i'm poor it's irrelevant it's a value it's got nothing to do with your budget it's got nothing to do with where you live it's got nothing to do with your skin color um 
fighting against an injustice or taking a position against an injustice has nothing to do with um, your ability to your abilities period um, you're, you can be rich you can be poor you can be um, living with your family you can be living on your own you can be living in the West you could be living in the East um, you can have any skin color you can be from any country and you can still hold the same values so that is the main point to make and then after that yes we can talk about how um, what they're saying is actually just not true um, veganism is not expensive because eating plants is the cheapest thing everywhere in the world so buying rice potatoes beans um, is way cheaper than buying animal products and yes another point to make is that all of these industries like the dairy industry and the meat industry are funded by the government everywhere in the world at least 99.9% .9 of countries around the world I can't speak for every country, maybe in some places this is not happening, but to my knowledge, this is happening everywhere. So the government is funding these industries. That's why you can get a bottle of cow's milk for $1. Because if the government wasn't funding it, then you would have to pay $5 for that. Same with meat products. So because there is a bigger demand for these animal products, the government is still funding it. By creating more demand for vegan products, we are going to change this whole system. So um, then vegan products will become more affordable. And let's be honest, vegan products are not that expensive compared to non-vegan products. So um, yeah, surely you can find a vegan ice cream that is, I don't know, $15 or $20 for a thumb. But, um, or a burger that will cost, if you go out and eat a burger, a vegan burger, it might co cost you about $20, right? But you can also have a cow's burger at a non-vegan restaurant that costs about the same. So it's about what you're eating. And again, you don't have to eat the processed vegan food, you can just stick to whole foods, which is the cheapest food on the planet. So if you're cooking at home, if you're just sticking to uh, rice, pasta, lentils, um, legumes, vegetables, seeds, bananas, um, all different kinds of fruit, not the expensive ones, like tropical fruits might be very expensive in some areas, berries might be too expensive, so skip that, avocados might be too expensive, skip the expensive stuff, it's actually the cheapest diet on the planet. And if you choose to go for um, the processed vegan products, then I believe that they're on par with the non-vegan version. So if you buy a vegan chocolate bar, it's pretty much the same as a non-vegan um, product. Maybe a little bit more expensive. Again, if it is in some uh, some countries, it's because of the government government subsidies because the government is supporting dairy products and meat products. That's why. But again, the main point is that it's not a privilege to take a stance against a form of injustice. You wouldn't have the same approach if I stopped being a racist, if I stopped supporting um, child abuse, if I stopped being a sexist, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell me that's a privilege. So it's actually, um, I can't remember who said it, but someone said it's actually a privilege to be able to take someone's life needlessly. So for these people that are paying for animals to be tortured and killed, that's more of a privilege. <laughs> that made you angry, Nelly? Just that point? Come here. And I really liked um, this point that Amanda made. If I had to spend a few more dollars, if it meant saving someone's life, I would pay for it. And that's exactly right. So once you're convinced that animal cruelty is wrong, once you're convinced that you don't want to be a part of that anymore, you're willing to do whatever you can to stick to your values. So if that meant spending a little bit more money, obviously if you can afford it, if that meant eating boring food for the rest of your life, if that meant not doing certain things, not participating in certain activities, not socializing with the same group of people, whatever it might be, 
you're talking about an injustice and you're talking about sticking to your values so even if you had to make adjustments like saving a little bit more money so you can spend it on vegan products if it meant not being able to eat fucking cheese for the rest of your life who gives a fuck you're talking about someone's life so yeah i do like that point what do you think about comparing um factory farming to slavery i think it's a reasonable comparison to um to mention that especially if you're talking to someone that says well killing animals is completely legal you can make the comment about how slavery used to be completely legal once um however it wasn't ethical and it's quite similar to what's happening uh with the animals now in the meat dairy and egg industries um, so yes, they are basically slaves, even though it's fu fully legal to, um, to use and abuse animals and to kill them for food. Um, it's, it's not necessarily moral or ethical. So it's, I think it's a fair comparison. Don't we have to supplement B12? Um, look, B12 is a bit tricky. Some, some vegans don't actually need to because we store B12 in our bodies for a very long time. I have seen studies that say you can store B12 for up to seven years. So you might not need any supplement. My recommendation is that you don't just take B12 without being tested, or as soon as you go vegan, you start taking B12. You should do a blood test every six months. That's what I do. At least every six months I do a blood test. I check my B12, iron, vitamin D, everything. Um, my B12 is actually usually higher than the normal range because um, I do take B12 and I take the injection and especially when I take the injection um, soon after that if I do a blood test it's quite high but B12 is something that is not harmful if it's higher than their normal range. Um, some other vitamins it's not good if you're above the range but with B12 is fine. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, so make sure you do get your bloods done before you take any supplement. Um, and B12 is not something that only vegans need to take. So non-vegans need to take B12 as well. But sometimes they choose to take it through animals. So the animals that are killed for human consumption, like pigs and chickens and cows, are all injected with B12. And then humans eat their flesh and then they think the B12 comes from the animal but is actually coming from the supplement. So you can directly go to the pharmacy, get the B12. You can do an injection. You can even do it yourself. You can get your GP to do it. Um, you can take um, <clears throat> a tablet. You can take a spray. You can take a drop. Depending on the dose, you might need to take it every day, once a week, once a month, every three months. Um, that's why I like the injection better because you do it twice or three times a year and you're good. Um, but yeah, B12 is interesting because you might not even need it. You might think you need it, but you may not. So always just do your bloods first and then take supplements. Okay, last question. What do you say to someone who says their doctor told them not to go vegan because it's unhealthy? Um, the first thing I would say is your doctor was actually um, educated in, in a facility, in a university that was funded by these industries indirectly. And that's a fact. So, so every doctor who goes through the system and they get education, um, they are told certain things because the information comes from biased um, sources the government is involved, um, the meat, dairy and egg industries are involved because there's so much funding coming in. And um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, how they used to promote smoking. Um, I think it was 30, 40 years ago um, in television ads, they would show doctors that recommend that certain brands of cigarettes are actually healthy and they recommend it. So they used to promote it because again, there was so much money behind the tobacco industry and the same thing is happening with meat and dairy industry now. So they are actually telling the doctors um, that <clears throat> eating 
um, animal products are good for you and are actually necessary like you need calcium from cow's milk you need protein from cow's flesh um, and the thing is for um, for doctors who are just general practitioners um, they get very little education on nutrition and diet um, so they're not actually educated on that stuff they don't get enough training to know everything about humans diet and nutrition um, so I would say to that person go and do your own independent research it's been actually proven that a whole foods plant-based diet is the healthiest diet on the planet not only it can um, prevent certain diseases and conditions and the process of aging it can actually reverse a lot of chronic illnesses so a whole foods plant-based diet is when you consume plants in their whole form so nothing processed um, none of those processed vegan meats cheese um, no processed sugar no oil um, that would be a whole foods plant-based diet so you're eating lots of grains vegetables fruits nuts and seeds um, in their complete form and that is considered to be the healthiest diet on the planet they can do their own research they don't have to just believe you you can send them to um, one of the best resources is nutritionfacts.org but you can just send them documentaries you can send them the information or you can encourage them to just go and look it up online and do their own research um, just remind them that the information that the doctor is giving to them one is biased two is not always accurate because they are basically not qualified to comment on nutrition not all doctors unless they have um, specifically studied nutrition or if they're a dietitian but then even with the regular dietitian because they went through the same system there is bias um, so yeah that's what I would say to them PCRM as well is another um, resource that you can refer to them and um, PCRM has an app I believe that you can download and um, you can do like a whole foods diet through them it's pretty cool all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I love doing these live streams with you all, and I hope that you found some value in this. I'll see you next time. Take care. Much love.